We learned in the previous video what a one-to-one -one function is. Basically, a one-to-one -one function is a function which passes the horizontal line test. What that means is there will be no repeated y-coordinates for the function, that every y-coordinate will uniquely determine its x-coordinate, and every x-coordinate in the domain gives us unique y-coordinate as well. So you have this one-to-one -one correspondence between the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates. In the context of a one-to-one -one function, we can define an inverse function. If our function is called f, the inverse function is called f inverse, and this is denoted as f superscript negative one. Now you have to be careful. In mathematics, we often use superscripts to talk about exponents. So like when you see x squared, that means x times x. Uh, in this context, we're using a superscript of negative one, but this does not mean the negative one power. f to the negative one is not here gonna mean one over f or anything like that. It's not an exponent, it is a superscript though. And this might seem a little unfortunate. Uh, this is what one typically refers to as a homograph. That is, we are using the same written notation to mean two different things. Um, it's kind of like if I write the word W-I-N-D on the screen right now. What's this word? Is it wind? Is it wind? It turns out it can be either one dependent on the context. And so the context has to tell you that this isn't an this right here isn't an exponent because we're not we're not taking numbers we're taking functions, um, and as such uh, we're, we're going to use this f to the negative one here f superscript negative one to represent the inverse function. Now what is the inverse function? The inverse function is going to be the function that turns the relationship around. So we have the domain of the function over here. We have the range of the function, and you know we have all these things over here like one two three. And maybe like x, y, well, we'll, we'll use numbers. So maybe like 7, 9, and 12. And our function f might be sending the number 1 to 7, the number 2 to 9, the number 3 to 12. Well, what the inverse function is going to do, it's going to change the direction of each of these arrows. It changes the direction. So instead of the arrows going to the right, we just switch them around and they go the other way around like this now. So f inverse will send seven back to one, f inverse will send nine back to two, and f inverse will send 12 back to three. And so the f inverse, you know, whenever f sends x to y, f inverse will do the opposite. f inverse will send y back to f. It reverses the order. So if you have like an order pair x comma y on the graph, it'll reverse that order as y comma x. Uh, let's give a more specific example here. Let's say a function is given by the following table. X has its, as, so given the function f here, its domain is 10, 14, 18, 22, 26, 30. And so that 10 maps to negative 12, 14 maps to negative 6, 18 maps to negative 2, 22 maps to 1, 26 maps to 3, 30 maps to 8, like so. Well, f inverse is just going to switch the order of this operation. It's basically like you just switch who's on top, who's on bottom here. f inverse will then take negative 12 and map it to 10. Uh, it'll take negative six and assign it to 14. And it does that because F, right, it's going the opposite direction, right? F assigned to 14 the number six. F inverse will assign to negative six the number 14. Uh, because, because F assigns to 26 the number three, F inverse will assign to three the number 26. It reverses the order of all of the assignments. So if F of 30, is equal to eight, this means that F inverse of eight is gonna equal 30. We reverse the process. Instead of sending 30 to eight, we'll send eight to 30. We just send it back to where it came from. And that's what an inverse function does. It just reverses the role of input and output. The input of the function F becomes the output of the inverse function F inverse, and the output of the function f becomes the input of the inverse function f inverse. Uh, let's see. Let, let's take a, let's take, look a little bit more detail about this. Let's say that we have a one to one function, and the reason that one to one is necessary is that if you reverse the direction, if you don't have the one to one property, the inverse relationship might not be a function and therefore not an inverse function. We'll talk about some more of that in, an, in another video here. But let's say we know for a fact that f of two gives us four. That's the only thing we know about the function. We know that f will assign to the number two, the number four. Well, what is f of, what's f inverse of four? We know that's gonna equal two because if 
f sends 2 to 4, then f inverse will send 4 back to 2. It just reverses the direction. Uh, and conversely, right, if f if f of negative, well, same thing, I guess. If f of negative 1 is 7, that means f inverse of 7 will equal negative 1. It reverses the direction. The x and y's, so like the x is the number we put in, the y is the number we get out. f inverse will just switch the roles of x and y. The point negative 1, 7 is on f. Conversely, negative, uh, sorry, 7, negative 1 is a point on f inverse. It'll switch the two numbers around. And say that we know that f inverse, what if f inverse assigns the number 3, negative 5? Well, if, if f inverse assigns to 3 the number negative 5, then f will do the opposite. It'll take the number negative 5 and assign to it the number 3. And so f, f of negative 5 is 3. And so the inverse relationship is just doing things backwards. It's, it's the relationship between addition versus subtraction, right? If you add 3, then subtract 3, right? One goes forward, one goes back. And we see inverse relationships all the time uh, in mathematics, like addition, subtraction, you have the multiplication and division. Right, these are inverse operations, and we're just talking about we're just trying to talk about with inverse function the generalization of this inverse operation business.